Hi, my name is Fiona Stang, and today we're going to talk about hamstrings. Through the course of many years of teaching and my own practice, one question that comes up quite a bit is hamstring pain. Now, sometimes we have tightness in the belly of our hamstring between the attachment points around where I'm pointing now. This is usually, if it's not too painful, this may just be because you're an active person. I know that when I play tennis or I go hiking or walking a ton or even skiing, sometimes when, when I get back on the mat and I do that first forward bend, yeah, I definitely feel my hamstrings, but I would consider that a good sensation, not a pulling. If it's intense or if you have a quite more intense um, hamstring feeling of not a good feeling in the insertion points, maybe here, or into the sits bones areas, that's something you wanna be really mindful about. And definitely listen. This is your body telling you that something's not working. I'm always amazed at how people will go through hamstring pain for a long time without addressing it. It's really important to address it right away and figure out how I can make this work with my practice so that my practice is healing this discomfort in my hamstrings. Now, if we look at standing postures, there's a ton of forward flexion. So what are we going to do? Well, you have to listen to your body and see what feels best. For some people, for example, the first, very first pose in standing, Padangustasana, Padahastasana, hamstring stretch right off the bat. For some people, as soon as they fold, to say maybe to here or so, they feel it. Sometimes simply bending the knees, alleviates the pain and takes it away. If that's the case, what you can do is go into the stretch with bent knees, catch your big toes if you can, inhale, head is up, exhale, bend your knees more and fold. I'm gonna call this a pain-free zone. And then from there, slowly go from a bent leg to a, a less bent leg. So maybe I can go from here to here, zero pain. But if I go to here, oh, I feel it right into my sit bone attachment. You want to get to the place where you don't feel it in the attachment points. Now, like I said, if it's a good sensation, just your belly of your hamstrings are tight, get into your free breathing, breathe away, and just follow the breath. Don't push. Um, your hamstrings, if you do have a regular yoga practice, they will open up. What's not great is when we push into insertion point hamstring discomfort. That we want to stay away from. So again, if you're at the point you start in the pose, no pain, no pain, slowly straight, and then you're like, oh, I went too far, I feel the pull. Okay, I'm gonna start again, bend my knees, and I'm just gonna go to here. This is a no pain zone, and I'm going to hold here. So, from more bent to less bent. Sometimes that works for people. This could be, if this is working, say for example, you're going into Trikonasana, and we step out, bend your knee as you get into it, make the catch, you know you can't catch then you could go for your shin make the catch if you can this is pain free pain free pain. oh i start to feel it i'm going to go back to the bent place and just straight into here this is going to be my pose today and you just listen when you go to exit from the pose so i'm more bent no pain no pain oh there's too much pain there i gotta start again no pain more bent to less bent one, two, three, four, five counts, we'll pretend. Look down, bend again, and then inhale, come up. And then exhale, other side. More bent to less bent, still no pain. Nice, even stretch coming up through the legs. One, two, three, four, five, we'll pretend. Bend and inhale, come up. Exhale, Samasthiti. Now, really being diligent, listening, more bent to less bent to the no pain zone. And you're, you're going to, over time, if you're very diligent with your practice, you'll notice eventually you can straighten a bit more. So keep checking in every couple of weeks. And you can think of the analogy of pulling up a stocking or pulling up a really long sock. You want to pull it all the way up nice and evenly. When we bend and slowly straighten, it's as if we're evenly pulling up that sock. Or you can think of the bundle lines coming up through the big toe inner leg right up to the pelvic floor, really coming alive from that bent, slowly straightening. 
If you do it quickly, then straighten. It's not going to be as effective. So it's a slow bend, straighten, or a slow bend, straighten. So that's one thing you can play around with. Um, years back, I had a hamstring pain into right around here behind my knee. And when I was in India practicing, when I got to Prasadi to Pranottanasana, I pretty much was in pain as if I had straight legs as soon as I went down, right away. So one day my teacher came up to me, and you know, I'm in the pose like this, not going any further, it feels awful. And he said, touch your head, meaning put my head on the floor. And I thought, that's not gonna be possible unless I do this. So I put my head on the floor. I'm going to pull this mat off so I don't do a split. I put my head on the floor by doing this. And he said to me, he's like, very good. And I thought, you've got to be kidding me. Look how bent my knees are. No pain, but my knees are completely bent. And I thought to myself, well, what's the point of the pose? My legs are supposed to be straight. But I thought about it and I played around with it. And that's where I learned that for me, and for many people with hamstring pains and insertion points, if bending more into the pose takes away that pull in the hamstring, start in the safe place. So here, head on the floor, safe place, no pain. And then over time, straighten, still good. Oh, nope, too much. Go back to the bent place. Slowly straighten. And over time, you'll find that eventually you can straighten your legs. But you're doing it with that idea of bending, pulling up the stocking, and slowly straightening. What was also interesting about that one lesson from my teacher was that he wanted my head on the floor. When you add your head on the floor in those four postures, and ideally that's how they're done with straight legs, but sometimes that's not accessible, what does it do? Well, when we add the head into the pose, whether it's like this or whether we're more flexible, no pain, and it's like this. But regardless, when the head is on the, the floor, it gives us more support. And I like to think of that as adding another layer of bandha or support. And that's what the head is doing in this place. Now, I've given you some scenarios where bending makes your hamstring feel better and slowly straightening. What if bending makes it feel worse? Well, then you can play around with still adding more foundation, just like I did now by putting my head on the floor. Let's find a different way to add foundation in poses. So say for example, well, triangle, we can literally just not go far into it. We might be able to try for rotated triangle to face a wall and just to put our head against the wall and let that be the pose. This could also translate into prasadi to padottanasana, bending the legs, or if that doesn't feel good, just start with straight, strong legs and just hold here. Now I know this looks different than the pose, but again, remember, this is just part of a journey that's constantly evolving. And if you're diligent and really listen, you'll start to notice things start to feel better. When we get to the floor, the same kind of um, rules apply. As you're sitting down, if straight legs doesn't feel good, well, start with your knees bent. Well, you can do it without the wall first. So you try starting with your knees bent, say we're on Paschimottanasana, catch your big toes, and slowly straighten. Oh, this is good, this is not good. Back to here, this is my safe zone. From bent to less bent, or more bent to less bent. You hold for five, inhale, head up, bend the knees a bit more, exhale, catch the sides, inhale, exhale, straighten a bit. If my hamstrings are really sensitive, take a blanket, take two blankets maybe. Again, more bent, sorry, so start with your knees bent, more bent, and then less bent. And you can actually rest your calves on the blanket. And this is nice just because it gives a bit of scaffolding. So I'm here, instead of catching my wrists in the second variation, I may just be at sides for a while. I'll even take my elbows and I'll gather them into my calves for even more support. That's the same idea as adding or putting your head on the floor in Prasadi to Padottanasana. And while I say that, 
If your head doesn't reach the floor, grab some books, put the books down and put your head on the books or yoga block is easier. But if you don't have one, books work fine. So always ask yourself, how can I give myself more support in the posture? More support is like adding more mula bandha. It's giving you more scaffolding for your body so that you can sit in that place in comfort and breathe and heal. Now, if that's not enough support, you're still like, oh, I really feel it. Then you can add the wall. So, Parshimottanasana, knees bent. Take your big toes, inhale, head up. Exhale, fold. With the addition of the wall, you're again giving yourself more support, more mula bandha. You may notice that sometimes a teacher adjusts you in that pose, not if your hamstring's hurting, and they take your feet. Well, they're literally scaffolding your body and giving you again more support, more mula bandha. If when you're doing your postures and seated, it hurts to bend your knees, we'll try straight, bend the knees a bit, slowly straighten, make sure everything's engaged, and then press your feet against the wall. And even if you can't tip forward, just, this is your pose, one, two, three, four, five, inhale, head up, exhale, release. If that feels frustrating still, you could take the pose and make it like a vinyasa. Inhale, one, look up, exhale, inhale, two, exhale, keep the legs strong, keep pressing, inhale, three, exhale, four, inhale, look up, exhale, and five, inhale, exhale, to exit, inhale, head up, exhale, release and cross. So those are some things that you can play around with, but it's important that if you've had sensation in the attachment points for more than a couple of months, you definitely need to start looking at it. Now, the other thing I'll say is sometimes when my hamstring was sore behind the back of the knee, I still appeared quite flexible, but sometimes flexibility isn't necessary, necessarily serving us. We actually need to cultivate some strength into this whole chain. So what you can do is add in some hamstring strengtheners, and these are can be very useful to play around with. Now when adding these in, they need to be done regularly, and over time you're increasing the amount of breaths that you're holding. So you could add this in before your practice if your hamstrings are really kind of bothering you, or if you're just kind of adding it in as maintenance after a while when your hamstrings feel quite good again. It's good to do this. I do it right before I do my back bends at the end. Just kind of goes. Now, I'm using books because I wanted to show if you don't have a yoga block, books work great. They're just a bit heavier. Um, if you have a yoga block, one of the slightly thicker ones, I think those are the perfect height. You're going to lie down and put one foot on the book. Now from here, you're going to curl your tailbone under, and then from there, it's even harder with the book because they're less sticky, you're going to, from there, lift up your left leg. Now I'm very, I'm only lifted about this much, maybe a couple inches, so I'm not in a full bridge. And because I don't have a nice sticky yoga block, I have to really pull with the back of my hamstring into my glute to hold this book in place, the top book at least, it's slippery. So I'm going to hold there for say 10 ujjayi breaths, lower, I take my little prop, move it to the side, and then from there, left side, I'm going to tuck, lift it slightly, straight up, but also my hands like this, whatever works, really strong through here, very subtly lifted, maybe only two inches, an inch and a half from the floor. So I'm kind of tucking my tailbone under to really access the hamstrings, the glutes, hold for 10. Then I bring it back to the right side. This time I'm going to do parallel five, same thing, barely lifted. The analogy is that I'm imagining I'm dragging my heel toward my head, 10 breaths, lower down, switch. Other side, 10 breaths. And then for the final one, I come back to that first side, tuck, straight.
strong lift, drag heel to head, five breaths here, five breaths here, other side. So I was doing three reps, 10 breaths each, different variations with my legs. And I'm imagining my foot's here and I'm imagining it's dragging, to, pressing down and dragging toward my head. Of course, it's not moving, but that dragging action really engages the whole hamstring. First time you do this and into the, even the hamstrings into the glutes, you may get a cramp. That means you need to do it. Um, this is something that repetition is key and over time you're adding duration to your hold. So maybe you can get to 11 breaths or maybe you start at five and that's enough and you work till 10. You'll find with hamstrings that once you're out of them, you can just maintain this. And now I just do this a couple times a week just to maintain my hamstring strength, um, especially when I'm doing activities that work my body a lot, like if I'm playing a lot of tennis or maybe if I'm skiing. So strengthening the hamstrings is an important compo component, as well as when we're working in our yoga postures, not to push into the pain, to find a way to practice with strong, steady breath, without pain in the body, without pain in the insertion points, we may feel a stretch in our belly, but that just means we're being active in other parts of our lives. That's fine. And always listen. Um, like I said, if you practice yoga regularly, your hamstrings will become flexible enough. It's a matter of balancing the flexibility and the strength so that we can do many different activities, whatever they are, and feel good. So that's hamstrings. Namaste.